Hi, so um, welcome to our multi-hyper OpenStack open uh, session. Uh, we're just do, gonna do a quick intro, then we'll get into the, the main content of the topic. Okay, so my name's James Page. I'm technical architect of the OpenStack engineering team at Canonical. Um, I've been working in open source for about the last 15 years, uh, primarily as an end user for the first 10 of those, and then the last six at uh, Canonical working on Ubuntu and OpenStack. Hi, uh, my name is Gabriel Sanfira, and I'm a senior cloud engineer with CloudBase, a company focusing primarily on uh, interoperability between uh, Windows, Microsoft Windows, and the OpenStack world, um, uh, and various other open source projects like Open, open vSwitch. I've been um, involved in uh, open source ever, si ever since 2006, and uh, I've been with CloudBase for the past three years now. Okay, so hypervisor choice. Um, increasingly, um, OpenStack um, and KVM, which is the, the, you know, the most well-supported option uh, in terms of hypervisor choice for OpenStack, is, it's not the only option. There are, are numerous other choices out there, all which have uh, solid drivers, VMware, uh, Hyper-V from the cloud-based guys, and uh, the new system container driver, LexD from Canonical, uh, are all choices um, that, that end users have. Um, and depending on what workloads you're putting on your cloud, may, you may drive what choice of hypervisor you want to use to, to host those workloads. Um, but you don't really want to go for a binary option in terms of your hypervisor choice. So um, it may be that some things are best on KVM, some things are best on Hyper-V, and some things are best in containers. So having the ability to mix all these things together in a single OpenStack cloud is, is really important. So don't take, a, don't take a single choice. This obviously requires a consistent approach to uh, some of the kind of core cloud concepts. So things like SDN networking, we have to get right across all of the hypervisor choices that we make and put into a single reason, uh, region. And we're gonna um, dig into, into that in a little bit more detail about how we achieve that with uh, Hyper-V and how LexD just plugs into the existing uh, solution for KVM. So I'm going to hand over to, to Gabriel now. He's going to talk a bit about what uh, CloudBase has been doing with Hyper-V. All right, so um, <clears throat> how many of you use uh, Windows in OpenStack? As a guest? Or as a hypervisor? Just one. Okay, how many of you are thinking of using Hyper-V in uh, OpenStack? Oh, not that many. <laughs> All right. We got used to this. That's why we do this po these polls every time we have a session uh, out of pure curiosity. So Hyper-V in OpenStack. Uh, it is a fully functional hypervisor from Microsoft. It's a great fit for OpenStack. And we as a company has have focused on, uh, like I said, interoperability between Microsoft Windows and uh, OpenStack and open source uh, since the beginning. Our main focus is to allow you, if you so wish, to just get a Windows VM, um, I'm sorry, a Windows host, uh, install Hi uh, Nova on it, and just put it in your OpenStack, have it available and usable without any modif modifications to your uh, existing infrastructure. That means that if you already have an OpenStack, be it uh, deployed via Juju, be it a fuel deployment or anything else, even manual, it's very easy to just go to our website, get an installer, uh, put it on your Windows box, and uh, have Hyper-V available in your cloud. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. We have an installer available on our website that will allow you to just point that particular box to your Keystone, uh, to your Glance, to your RabbitMQ server, and it will uh, become available as a hypervisor inside your OpenStack. It's a standard installer uh, that you would norm, uh, that a Windows uh, sysadmin would be used to. It also has an unattended mode that is available for um, uh, automation, if you so wish. And this is actually what we use. Uh, uh, the, the command line parameters is what we use to automate uh, deployments of Hyper-V inside OpenStack clouds. SDN solutions. Uh, we've ported Open vSwitch to Windows, to Hyper-V, to, to be more specific, together with VMware. Now, you, could, you can have OVS on top of Windows, given the same uh, functionality as you normally would have on any Linux box. So feature parity is one-to-one -one almost. Uh, actually, I think it's one-to-one, -one, period. 
uh, you get a VXLAN, GRE, NVGRE, uh, STT, and with uh, OVS 2.5, you also get LACP bonding. So the CLI is the same. The same CLI you're used to on uh, Linux is available on Windows. You get OVS, VSCTL, show, add port, del port, whatever you want. Bridges become tap devices inside Windows, so you can configure them normally. All you have to do to get network connectivity on those is add a physical port to that bridge, and you have a medium onto which to send packets. Um, <clears throat> compatible with open daylight, of course. Anything basically that um, speaks OVSDB should be fine. So there's no limitations in that respect. Uh, in OpenStack, it's being integrated as a, a simple uh, neutron agent. So you get the same neutron agent that runs on Linux running on Windows as well. So there's no difference. It's all upstream. You just get the code. If you want to install it yourself, you can. But if we have it installed, why not use that? Now, we get a lot of questions about uh, reference architectures in, uh, when deploying Windows services, Windows as a hypervisor in, inside OpenStack. In December, we did an article uh, revolving around TP4, uh, Windows 2016 Technical Preview 4. And we presented it as a hyperconverged design. Now, many people do this now. Uh, this is no different. It's basically compute, storage, and uh, clustering all into all on the same node. So in essence, you get uh, a bunch of nodes that participate in the same cluster, sharing one or many disks, depending on how many are free to be used as storage spaces direct, uh, across all nodes. Those disks basically mirror the data across all of them. It depends. It has three re resiliency uh, settings. Basically, they're equivalent of RAID 0, 1, and 5. This is a basic layout of the hyperconverged design. It's, um, it depicts basically every service running on top of each individual uh, Hyper-V node. You even get Cinder volume on top of Windows. It exports two backends, an iSCSI backend and an SMB backend. We've uh, integrated the SMB3 support in libvirt as well, so you're free to use uh, either Hyper-V or libvirt with a Cinder volume backend running on top of Windows uh, storage server. Um, the hyperconverged design also allows you to um, fail over in case of disaster or uh, drain a system of uh, VMs in case you need to migrate it, decommission it, service it, whatever you want. It's seamless. And starting with Mitaka, we have a uh, clustered driver, a cluster Hyper-V driver that allows you to do this. Windows as a guest. We've, um, uh, for Windows as a guest, we have the equivalent of cloud init for Windows. It's called cloud-based init. It's been around for a while. And if you've ever wanted to use Windows as a guest inside OpenStack, this is probably what you've used. We provide uh, Windows images as well. So we have evaluation images on our website if you, if, if you wish to deploy easily deploy uh, Windows 2012 R2 in your OpenStack cloud. You can also build your own if you want. We have uh, tools available on GitHub to build your own images. This means uh, you will need an ISO, of course, and you can package any drivers that you need inside your uh, Windows v uh, VM before you deploy it to your, to your cloud. Uh, if you want to add, for example, uh, Virtio drivers, this makes it easy. Just go to GitHub uh, slash cloudbase github.com slash cloudbase, you'll find plenty of tools that will help you out. Now, our preferred way to deploy this is, of course, Juju. It's not limited to that, but uh, it's what we've been working for for quite some time. We have an excellent partnership with Canonical, uh, and we've integrated um, Windows support into Juju and Maz. We've created uh, many uh, charms for Windows services, and this allows you, if you so wish, to deploy Hyper-V with the hyperconverged scenario, that means clustering Active Directory, um, storage spaces direct, which is a brand new technology from uh, Microsoft that um, allows you to use commodity hardware as uh, a storage, uh, storage array, in essence. So uh, that, that basically means that you no longer have to have access to very expensive uh, uh, SANs to get a, a decent storage array. You can 
shared disks among, uh, amongst all the nodes in the cluster. So basically, once you form the cluster and enable storage spaces direct, you'll be able to save those instances on the clustered storage itself. And uh, furthermore, it allows you to enable scale out file server that also ma makes it available to any other node that wants to consume it via SMB or Samba. Like I said, we have an array of Juju charms that allows you to deploy Windows workloads and Hyper-V as a hypervisor, it's in their volume. Uh, the Hyper-V charm, for example, allow, uh, de also deploys OVS, so you can have one-to-one -one parity between KVM and OVS. The whole point of this is to make it as seamless an experience as possible. You'll never be able to tell the difference between Hyper-V or KVM unless you try to SSH into a Hyper-V node. So when you see it in your hypervisor list, that's when you know it's a Hyper-V. Otherwise, deploying to it, using it, is just the same as using KVM. This is your queue. Okay, so um, let's spend a little bit of time talking about uh, LexD and the, the driver we've written for Nova to integrate it into OpenStack. So I'm going to start with a, a bit of an overview of the LexD itself. Um, so LexD is a project that we started about 12 months ago. I think we announced it in, at the Paris Summit, um, and we've been working on it ever since. It's a bit of a ground-up rethink on, on how to do system containers, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute what system containers mean compared to application containers. Uh, ground-up rethink in, in terms of the UX on, on, on how to manage system containers on Linux. So um, it provides a, a, a daemon that you run on, on your host uh, that has a REST API, uh, which we think is a, a nice, simple API for managing images, uh, the containers booting off those images, the underlying storage that's on the host, and the, and the networking of those containers. Um, has a nice command line interface, um, and it's, it's very much a kind of retake on the original LXC work that, um, that we've done over the last sort of five, six years in the Linux kernel itself. Um, as I said, it's designed to be really simple, really simple to use, which has made the driver integration into Nova relatively easy. It's meant to be fast. Um, one of the objectives we had was that uh, uh, spinning up a container uh, should be very, very rapid, um, ideally sub-second, and that's pretty much what we've got to. So by combining uh, a kind of optimized path for creating containers um, and by using very efficient storage backends, such as ZFS, uh, to do copy and write cloning of images, um, we can achieve very, very short boot times uh, to get running containers. So the time to go from launching a container to being able to log into it is uh, about 0.6 seconds on your average laptop. Designed to be secure. Um, so uh, a LexD managed container is by default an unprivileged container. Uh, the difference between a privileged container and an unprivileged container is that the processes in an unprivileged container are not running as root on the host. So if there was a compromise of the, uh, the containment of a container, then that compromise uh, only has the equivalent access of the unprivileged user on the, on the host, on the host uh, Linux install as well. So that really helps. We wrap that in our Palmer. So if that does happen, then there's some additional protection for, for processes in that process group, and they can't attack the, the rest, of, rest of the host. Um, the rest of, um, API is network accessible. Um, we use uh, TLS for encryption. Um, and authentication is done using client certificates. And we have a, a bootstrap mechanism to get um, clients logged into hosts to allow that to happen really neatly. So I mentioned the word system containers. Containers is a, w uh, a word that's um, overloaded all the time. Um, it really just means containment. You know, actually, a KVM instance is really a container, but it has to have the kernel and firmware and all the other bits and pieces that are real machine and simulating a really ma real machine. So if we look at things like Ro Rocket and Docker, uh, they're about application containment. So typically a single process. There's not, nothing else running in the container apart from that one thing. We have the, the hypervisors we all know and love, VMware, Hyper-V, KVM. Um, they're managing um, a, a group of processes in one way or another. That may be through uh, a KVM container with uh, QMU. Uh, maybe view Hyper-V, Hyper and that's where LexD fits. It's equivalent to what KVM is doing with, with QMU. We're, we're managing full system containers. You log on to a, a LexD managed container, it has SSH to start off with. It has syslog. It has cron. It has all the things you would expect to have on a full system, and you can manage it in exactly the same way. So all your tooling that currently works with your physical server infrastructure and your KVM instances works identically in a LexD container. 
We have other hypervisory type features in NextD, so we can snapshot containers. Um, we can roll back in time to snapshots we've made. We can create images from those snapshots. All things that um, other hypers have done well, um, we aim to do one as well. We can do migration between LexD hypervisors, so moving those containers um, depending on uh, for maintenance, for uh, balancing a workload, whatever it might be, we're able to do that as well. So that makes LexD a really great fit for the semantics of the, uh, the end user API for Nova. So we're not aiming to be in Magnum, because that's very much about application containment and management of those containers. We're, we're aiming for, for Nova as our primary use case and managing containers as, as systems. And as a result, a Nova LexD managed container is managed exactly the same way as a KVM instance. You boot, reboot, resize, add floating IPs to it. As I said, we integrate into uh, Neutron in exactly the same way as KVM does, so it's open vSwitch on the host um, or whichever SDN you might be using. Um, and we have some nice semantics on, on how LexD can then plug in uh, to the Open vSwitch instance in a very similar way to how libvirt manages. We can apply constraints to containers as well. So um, if you've ever booted a, a Lexi container with no constraints, you, you see all the resources of the host system by default. Um, so we're, we're able to apply flavors as we're, as, as we're booting containers. So uh, an M1 small is going to ever only the containers ever only ever going to be able to use one processor and a couple of gig of RAM, and it can't ever use any more of that. Um, and we we can use that for capacity management and reporting the capacity on a LexD host back into the Nova scheduler for scheduling decisions as well. So, so we can do migration, so we can move uh, instances around between hosts, um, allowing for maintenance or work ba workload balancing, uh, that sort of stuff. And the other thing that um, is really noticeable about LexD is, is performance. So, in effect, all the processes that are running in the container are running on the host OS. There's no additional level of kernel, there's no emulated firmware, uh, BIOS, that sort of thing. So, um, the KVM stack's great, it's very optimized, there's been a lot of really good work gone into uh, the, the virtual, virtual drivers for, for instances and optimizing all the copaths to make sure everything is really, really efficient. When we look across the board at metrics, the one that really jumps out is when you start doing lots and lots of high concurrency small I.O. And, and LexD deals with that particular workload very, very well. So this is, Cassandra Stress is one of the, the kind of stock um, benchmarks for, for assessing the performance of a Cassandra cluster. And it generates um, lots and lots of really noisy writers with, with very small I.O., um, both network and disk. And when we're on, that, on LexD, we see um, a much, much lower latency when compared to the same test on the same hardware with KVM. Um, which results in a much higher throughput in terms of um, what uh, a given set of hardware can do uh, for this particular benchmark. So, it's, LexD as, a, as, a, as a, a hypervisor is, is very, very good for getting your processes as close to the bare metal as possible. So, for sort of HPC applications, that sort of stuff, it's, it's ideal. It's also very good for density. The, there's very, very minimal overhead in a container. Um, we were booting some up earlier for, for the demo that we're hopefully about to do. Uh, uh, and the, the overhead of each container is about eight megabytes. Um, that, that's an idle run for a container. So if you've got lots and lots of small workloads that aren't particularly busy, then packing them into LexD containers, you're going to get much better density out of your available memory and process resources than you would do with KVM. Okay, so how do we put that all together and make, it, make a true multi-hypervisor OpenStack cloud? So the first trick is how do we ensure that things get scheduled in the right place? We know we have a workload that we know runs best on Hyper-V. How do we make sure it gets onto a Hyper-V hypervisor and not onto a, a, KVM, a KVM host or, a, or an XD host? The way we've approached that is to, to use the, the hypervisor type attribute that you can place on any glance image. So by tagging the images, um, each Im the image for each of these hypervisors is actually in a, di in a different format, which is helpful in this, in this case. We can ensure that the, the Nova scheduler knows exactly where to make scheduling decisions when you want to boot one of those images. So the semantics are you pick your image, you pick your flavor, and you ask Nova to boot it. And Nova then will then use, um, I think it's the, the image properties filter, to ensure that the Scheduling request is then matched to an appropriate underlying hypervisor, and, and your instances end up in exactly the right place. 
And as um, Gabriel mentioned, um, he's mentioned Juju and Maz a couple of times. So um, how do you deploy this, this wonderful beast of KVM, Lexd, and, and Hyper-V all, 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 all in, in one, one cloud? Well, um, the approach we've taken is to, to use Juju, which is a service modeling tool from, from Canonical, and Maz, which is the, the tool, Metal as a Service, used for managing physical machine resources in your data center. Um, and by modeling all the various different components of OpenStack, both on uh, Linux and on, on Windows, we're able to have a single deployment tool to, to lay down an entire cloud, which both provides Hyper-V and provides LexD and provides KVM. Uh, to give a, a consistent deployment experience for, for putting down an OpenStack cloud. I'm going to look at Gabriel and hope let's, he might have a monitor going by now. Let's so. give it a shot. Unfortunately, we've had some trouble with video out on this thing. And no joy, unfortunately. Something else. Okay, so while Gabriel's desperately trying to get some video out going, um, and if we don't get it on screen, if anybody wants to come and have a look, then please come up at the end and we'll run people through on the, on the laptop screen. Um, he's got a, on his laptop, he's got um, a, a virtual environment set up using um, VMware Fusion. Um, and that includes a, a full MAS deployment um, and a, a number of, of, of um, virtual machines that, that are simulating physical hardware. They've all been registered into Maz in exactly the same way as you would do in data center. Maz is able to then power control those via the VMware Fusion API. Gives you a nice sandboxed way of testing out uh, deployment uh, topologies. Um, he's, we've then used Juju to then deploy the cloud onto that infrastructure. Yes. And we're not going to get a video out? No. OK. So um, like I said, if people want to come see the demo, please um, come up and we'll run you through. Um, we've got 10 minutes left total, so um, if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to ask now. There's mics on either side, and if you can speak into those, then um, they'll be available on the recording afterwards. Uh, one thing I wanted to know about was, you said that it uses the image metadata? Yeah. Uh, now, what about booting from a volume? Would that not be possible in this situation to have it pick the right hypervisor? It's an interesting question. Uh, I don't know whether that metadata is lost at that point in time, quite possibly. So, yeah, it wouldn't, that, be, used yeah, it wouldn't so. be used at all with it. So, yeah. So, you mentioned um, that you can do live migration on LXD, right? What are the performance of. Uh, Sorry, can you repeat? The performance it? about live migration of uh, LXD? Um, so, uh, as of today, and uh, the 1604 release of Ubuntu contained the first uh, product, well, uh, first gen GA of uh, the Nova Lex driver, Lex D driver, we're going to do cold migration. Uh, oh, the line nice. migration work is still in progress. Um, there's a preview of it in 1604, but we didn't feel it was good enough to put into the driver, so we'll be working on that for our next release in six months' time. Uh, the performance is very much dependent on, on how much stuff is running in the container, so the, the amount of I.O. it's generating, the amount of memory and processor it's consuming is proportional to the amount of time it then takes to transfer that over. So yeah, you get a blip. Um, in much the same way as you would do with a KVM migration or a Hyper-V migration. It's as minimal as we can make it. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have uh, two questions, one following on the other. First, you mentioned that um, the image type is kind of tied to the hypervisor type. Yeah. Uh, could you explain that a little more? And then also, to follow up, is it possible to use the same image type for your image on multiple hypervisors? And I'm thinking here LXD and... Um, uh, KVM because Hyper-V probably. Well, yeah, Hyper-V is um, the, what's the format for Hyper-V? VHDX. Yeah, so VHDX is very specific to Hyper-V. Um, the, the image formats for LexD and KVM are, are different as well. Um, you cannot boot a QCOW2 image on a LexD hypervisor. The, the, the underlying semantics of how an image is managed into LexD are, are very much different. Um, so the, the image format for uh, LexD is basically a root table, um, which then is LexD then will um, unpack into a, into a uh, volume that it creates and then presents that to the container. So um, there is n currently for KVM, Hyper-V, and LexD, there isn't any crossover in the image formats, which is allows us to use this approach for, for scheduling. Uh, you showed storage latency benchmark 
comparing LXD versus KVM. Um, two questions. Is there a specific reason why KVM be performance was so bad compared to LXD? And second question is, did you also compare Hyper-V? I, I haven't done that benchmark, so <laughs> I can't answer that one. Um, I, I'm not a, um, a virtualization expert, but um, we have a lot of those at Canonical um, who looked at our data and, and, and thought about why that might be the case. Um, my understanding is, is um, especially when there's contention on, on, on uh, between virtual machines on the same set of hardware resources, that the cost of switching in a full KVM instance on and off processor is what then generates that, that drop in the increase in latency. So because the LexD processes are running directly as individual processes on, on the host, we get all the advantages of the native process scheduling in the Linux kernel, and it, it's just much more optimized. There's the, the cost of putting a process rather than an entire machine on and off processor is much, much smaller. So that, that's, why we see, we, that's why we think we see that difference in performance. I don't, oh, well, I haven't benchmarked Hyper-V <coughs> against LXD, so. We haven't either, so LXD is quite new. We haven't had a chance, but uh, Hyper-V is on par with KVM in terms of performance, given that uh, uh, enlightenment drivers inside uh, VMs running on top of KVM for Windows uh, are enabled, uh, for on top of Hyper-V, sorry, are enabled, so, and vice versa. So if you enable the drivers, the power virtualized drivers in both cases, you get similar performance. The added value is in other areas like licensing, uh, support for uh, various workloads on top of Windows and so on. You're welcome. So to get LXC in your existing OpenStack cluster, all I have to do is install, I mean we are running uh, CentOS Red Hat. Okay. All we have to do is install LXC and add it to my NovaConf and that's it? Uh, so, um, CentOS is uh, not something we've been testing on. Um, in theory, uh, the drivers are in Python, uh, the Nova driver, LexD is a Go binary. Um, there's a number of other things you need to get lined up, like kernel versions, LexD versions for libraries. Um, you could po possibly make that work on CentOS. We haven't done that, that particular piece of work. If you want to try it, and in a place we know works really well, 1604, which came out last Thursday, is an ideal platform for it. You can do it on 14.04. You just have to jump through more hoops to get all the right things backported and installed. So, any other questions? Cool. So, um, if people want to come see the demo, um, I'm sure Gabriel will be more than pleased to have people huddling around him uh, in the last five minutes we've got for the next session. Um, so, oh, you're not Tyker Anderson. Sorry. I got your name wrong on the last page, oh, but thank you fine. for listening. Uh, I look like a tackle. <laughs> I don't copy and paste slides, honestly. Um, there's, a, there's a little bit more information about LXC and, and Linux containers there. Um, and um, if you grab um, Google for Nova LXD, you'll find a lot more detail about our actual driver as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>